In this video, I am going to show you several shortcuts to how to quickly get the maximum moment and maximum shear for a beam. So these formulas are for very specifically loaded beams, and um, they're just a way to help you solve the maximum moment and shear without going through the whole diagram process. So your question might be off the bat, well, why even do the, the diagrams if there is an easier way? And the answer is, um, you should know what's behind the formula. Like as an engineer, if you guys pursue any kind of engineering field, you can't just read the answer that the computer spits out for you. Yes, in the real world, you will have computer programs that do your tedious calculations for you. But if you don't understand what's going into them, you're not going to be able to optimize your design. You're not going to be able to troubleshoot if the answer it's giving is not correct. You're not going to be able to go back and change up your design and understand the implications of what your design will have, like the impacts. Like you need to understand the inputs in order to just be able to receive the output. So now that you understand the input, that the maximum moment diagram is giving us the worst case scenario, now we are able to get the formula. Okay, so in order to do the formula, we are going to basically go through the whole process to derive them. But instead of using numbers, like numbers for the length, numbers for the load, numbers for the distributed load, we are going to use variables and then create general formulas that can be applied to any uh, loading uh, value. Uh, a lot of words, a lot of words. Okay, so here is a, a simple beam. You have a distributed load here. Um, we have a, it's 1,000 pounds per foot. So here's your shear diagram. Here's your moment diagram. And you know that you can get the reactionary forces by doing um, 1,000 multiplied by 20 and that's applied halfway, and each of these experiences half of it. And then to get the maximum moment in the middle, you get the area of this triangle. Well, that's pretty methodic. So every single time we just had this loading scenario, it's going to be the same process. This value multiplied by the length divided by two, boom. And then this is gonna be this height multiplied by one half multiplied by this length right here because the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So with that logic, let's go ahead and derive the formula. We call the overall length L and the distributed load or uh, the uniform distributed load W. So um, the reactionary forces are going to be W times L, and that's going to be cut in half. So the reactionary forces are going to give you WL divided by two. This is a little bit longer, but I think you guys should be able to say, okay, it's, it's this multiplied by L divided by two will give me each of these. And once I have that, the moment is gonna be this area right here. And the uh, height of this shear diagram is gonna be WL over two. So if the overall length is L, this right here is L over two. So now I'm just gonna get the area of this right here. It's one half base times height. So one half multiplied by the base, which is L over two, multiplied by the height, which is WL over two. So the maximum moment can be simply found by doing WL squared over eight. L times W times L is WL squared, two cubed, two times two times two is eight. So the maximum moment is WL squared over eight. Um, the, this right here, this is deflection. We're going to get to that, uh, in probably next lesson. So don't worry about deflection right now. Every time you see this little Delta symbol, that's like the difference. That's how much the beam is deflecting or, uh, how much it's sagging. We're going to worry about that next class. This class, we're focusing on reactionary forces, which is typically going to be your maximum shear. Your maximum shear is going to always come at the support, uh, and your max moment. That's what we're focusing on today. Okay, so we just derived one of them. We can do one more. We'll do a point load right in the middle. So if I have a point load right in the middle, 
what are these each of these experiencing? If I had a hundred right in the middle, what is each side experiencing? Well, I would hope you realize it's 50, right? So it's just half of this. So P divided by two is what each side is experiencing. And here it is. Now, here is what your moment diagram would look like. I have the area of this right here. So this height is P over two. And this length is L over two because it's half of it. So P over two multiplied by L over two is just going to be PL over four. So the area of the shaded region, P over two multiplied by L over two gives me PL over four. And now you just derived it. So I can give you any P and any L and you can very quickly calculate what the moment, maximum moment and maximum shear is. And that's basically it. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of where these formulas are coming from. I don't just want to give them to you. So let's uh, go to uh, Google Classroom and I'll just show you the sheet that we're going to be working with. So here is your beam formula shortcut worksheet. You know, L is length, P is concentrated load, W, and it says pounds, it could be kips, whatever I tell you. W is the uniform load, R is the reactionary forces, which is going to be the same as the shear force. Reaction is going to be max shear in this case, whichever is greater, RA or, or RB will be the max shear. And then M is the max bending moment. And A and B are just the distances from the respective uh, supports. So here are the formulas. If you have a beam that's loaded in this way, the reactionary forces are P over 2, and the max moment is PL over 4. We actually did that one. We did this one too. And then this goes ahead and gives you the formula for four different loading scenarios. In this one, we're actually combining the two, a point load in the middle and a distributed load. And if you look at it, it's actually just this plus this, right? If I look at the reaction right here, it's P over 2 plus WL over 2 for reaction. Well, here's your P over 2. Here's your WL over 2. You just add them. Same with the moment. PL over 4 plus WL squared over 8. PL over 4 plus WL squared over 8. So you are more than welcome to combine these load scenarios. Here's if you have two equal concentrated loads. Notice how these are both located a distance of A from the support. And here's where you have the two equal concentrated loads symmetrically placed and a distributed load all in one. And here's an asymmetrically placed. It's placed, A is not equal to B in this scenario. If it was equal to B, then it would be like the first one. So use these formulas right here. This lesson actually should be one of the easier ones that we do. We're going to be doing deflection later. Oh, yeah. That's what you guys have to look forward to. Here's a little teaser for you. But for now, we're focusing on R and M. Ta.